The pyramids are some of the most magnificent structures in the world. But how were they built? Hello guys, and welcome back to our channel. In this video, we explore the entrance vault to the Great Pyramid and the Scan Pyramids Corridor to try to understand how these ancient Egyptian engineers constructed such an incredible monument. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy this exploration of one of the seven wonders of the world. According to researchers, the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world and a stunning example of architectural genius, contains a concealed vacuum that is at least 100 feet long. The room's measurements are similar to those of the Grand Gallery of the Pyramid, the 153-foot-long, 26-foot-tall passageway that leads to Khufu's burial chamber, the king for whom the pyramid was constructed. The contents of the space, its function, and whether there are one or many of them are yet unknown. Recent developments in high-energy particle physics have made it feasible to detect the emptiness, the 4,500-year-old pyramid's largest interior structure for the first time since the 1800s. According to Egyptologist and archaeologist Yukonori Kawai, a National Geographic Emerging Explorer, this is unquestionably the find of the century. There have been several theories concerning the pyramid, but nobody has ever even dared to speculate that such a big vacuum exists above the Grand Gallery. The discoveries are the most recent in a 2,000-year effort to comprehend the Great Pyramid of Giza, a subject of mystery and curiosity for centuries. Approximately 4,500 years ago, during the fourth dynasty of the Old Kingdom of Ancient Egypt, the pyramid was constructed. Egypt at that time had a strong, highly centralized monarchy that benefited greatly from commerce and Nile-supported agriculture. Unfortunately, the Great Pyramid represents the power's pinnacle. Khufu, a king who ruled from 2509 to 2483 BC, constructed a pyramid for himself whose base covers more than 13 acres and was once 479 feet tall. About 2.3 million limestone pieces needed to be mined, transported, sized, and placed into position to make up the monument. According to Kate Spence, a University of Cambridge archaeologist who specializes in ancient Egypt, these kinds of pyramids are the main output, so to speak, of the rulers who constructed them. It seems like Egyptian civilization is very much focused on constructing pyramids right now. Since then, people have been intrigued about the Great Pyramids. Nowadays, visitors access the pyramid via a tunnel built in the 9th century AD. Two expeditions of the pyramid have been assisted by the National Geographic Society, one of which took place in 2002 and focused on the air shafts that protruded from one of the three chambers. The Scan Pyramids Project, an international expedition run by Egypt's Ministry of Antiquities, is where the latest find was made. The initiative, which was started in October 2015, intends to use a variety of technology to look inside Egypt's biggest pyramids without entering them. It wasn't entirely surprising when Scan Pyramids previously revealed the discovery of a few fascinating holes and abnormalities. Spence claims that the inside of the pyramids are far more pitted and strewn with debris than is often thought. The new vacuum, however, came as a complete surprise and may be the most important finding yet made by moon radiography, an imaging method initially used to study the pyramids of Giza. Chris Morris, a physicist at Los Alamos National Laboratory and an authority in moon imaging methods, calls the discovery a remarkable discovery. I'm envious because this makes another moon radiographer jealous. These guys have made a fantastic discovery. Using this method, it is possible to see through cathedral walls, Mayan pyramids, and even volcanoes. The method depends on the moons that naturally fall to the ground. Cosmic rays, which are high-energy particles speeding across our galaxy, constantly shower Earth with these particles when they clash with the planet's upper atmosphere. Moons are invisible to the human eye, but scientists can detect them using specialized films and detectors that follow their 3D journeys. Multiple moon detectors placed inside and outside of a structure allow researchers to map the structure's solid and empty areas because moons go through empty space more readily than they do through solid materials. According to University of Texas at Austin particle physicist Roy Schwitters, who employs moons to investigate Belize's Mayan pyramids, what's so lovely is that moons are like Goldilocks. They lose enough energy to detect them, but not so much that they simply get absorbed into the object. They really are a wonderful gift from nature. In the case of the Great Pyramid, a group headed by Kunihiro Morishima, a physicist at Nagoya University, installed moon detectors within the structure, allowing them to gather data for months. 
The initial data from Morishima were released, and to the researchers' astonishment, they revealed that an area deep within the pyramid allowed many more moons to get through than they had anticipated. These extra moons seemed to trace a 100-foot-long cavity that had a Grand Gallery-like cross-section. Later, two other teams from the French Atomic Energy Commission and the Japanese Particle Physics Research Organization KEK collaborated to verify Morishima's findings. Different techniques were used by each team to locate moons. There is less than a one in a million chance that any one experiment was a fluke since the researchers saw a signal for the emptiness in each experiment that attained at least a five sigma level of statistical significance. The same standard of proof is needed to confirm the existence of novel subatomic particles like the Higgs boson. The area that seems to be empty, which the researchers neutrally referred to as the void, is at least 100 feet long. Its function is still unknown, and for the time being, researchers are being careful in not using the phrase chamber. Mehdi Tayyubi, president and co-founder of the Heritage Innovation Presentation Institute and research co-author, said at a press conference that, We don't know for the moment whether it's horizontal or inclined, if it is constructed from one structure or numerous subsequent constructions. What is certain is that the emptiness exists, that it is remarkable, and that no theory could have predicted it. Although Tayyubi and his colleagues are certain that they do not understand what the vacuum is, Egyptologists have already begun to speculate on what it may be. Spence, a Cambridge archaeologist, speculates that the void could be a building byproduct of the Great Pyramid. She reminds us that the ceiling of the rooms above the King's Chamber, the main chamber where Khufu was buried, is made up of enormous stones that each weigh tens of tons. Spence hypothesizes that the hole could have been an interior ramp used to get the enormous roof pieces into position since it lines up with the Great Pyramid's top chambers, which were added there to relieve pressure on the King's Chamber below. She claims that this ramp may have been left unfilled or weakly backfilled as building progressed. This view, according to Spence, is the most plausible because of the void's location. It's too strategically located to install blocks there. The Grand Gallery lies immediately above the vacuum, which Egyptologist Salima Igram believes may indicate that it was involved in the building of that corridor. She cynically advises, though, to be skeptical of recent interpretations. She adds, I don't believe it's ever too early to guess, but you may be wildly off. We'll have to wait and see whether these or other theories concerning the Void's function come true. Work on the project, according to Tayubi and other Scan Pyramid colleagues, has just begun. And a word of warning to anyone who has fantasies of going into the abyss themselves, researchers caution that there are no future intentions to dig into the vacuum since there are no known tunnels that link to the abyss. Instead, they assert that they will make every effort to observe the area without interfering with it in the foreseeable future. There is a lot of heavy, thick rock, and drilling into it might have unintended consequences, according to Ikram. Would you want to clean the Mona Lisa so you can see what's behind her, if there was anything there? Maintaining the monument's integrity is crucial. In conclusion, the entrance vault to the Great Pyramid and the Scan Pyramid's corridor are both fascinating features of this ancient wonder. While we may never know exactly how they were used, it is clear that they served an important purpose in the lives of the people who built them. Thanks for watching.